Hello everyone, I'm Luis Ortega from PCR Online and Aero Intervention and today we will comment with Dr. Frederick Zimmerman, which is an interventional cardiologist from the hospital in Caterina in the Netherlands. He's the first co-author of the quality of life assessment of the FAMT trial, which was presented today as a late-breaking clinical trial in the ACC 22 sessions. Dr. Zimmerman, uh, a pleasure to host you here in PCR Online. Please, can you, can, can, you comment, can you comment on the on the results, on the background results, methodology, of course, of how do, do the FEM investigators assess quality of life in the trial? Sure. So we already know from previous trials that quality of life improves after the revascularization, but more so after cabbage than after PCI. So previous trials used the angiogram to guide PCI and used either first generation drug eluting stents or even bare metal stents. So we now have FFR guided PCI and also second generation drug eluting stents, both which have been proven to um, improve outcome. So therefore the FAN3 study was conducted. It was a comparison between FFR guided PCI with uh, second generation drug eluting stents versus cabbage in patients with three vessel disease not involving the left main disease. Patients were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion to either FFR guided PCI or cabbage. And a total of 1500 patients were, uh, were randomized. Well, the primary endpoint uh, that was presented by, by Dr. Fearon at TCT last year, uh, we showed that uh, PCI uh, did not meet non-inferiority at one year. However, the, if you look at the event rates, compared to previous trials such as Syntax, and we see that the, the event rates are much lower and that the, the differences between PCI and cabbage narrows. So for that reason, because of the smaller differences in, in events, things like quality of life, angina, working status, um, become even more important for clinical decision-making. And that was the reason for this uh, quality of life sub-study. It was a pre-specified sub-study where at the baseline one month and 12 months, we obtained the uh, quality of life by the EQ5D questionnaire. Uh, also the visual analog scale uh, of the EQ5D was obtained at that moment. And we assessed also uh, engine and working status at those points, as well as at six, six months. The primary finding was that at, at 12 months, there was no difference in quality of life between the, the cabbage group and the PCI uh, arm was in fact identical. However, there was a significant difference in the trajectory of improvement in favor of FFR guided PCI. Uh, and that was also confirmed with the visual analog skill, one of the secondary endpoints. Angina was dramatically decreased by both forms of revascularization, and there was no difference at 12 months. And regarding working status, people in the cabbage arm worked less at one month uh, post procedure, but at 12 months, there was no difference. However, when we looked at a pre-specified subgroup of patients younger than 65 years old at time of randomization, we found that in the cabbage arm, people work less after one month, but also after six months, as well as 12 months. Finally, we formed uh, pre-specified subgroup analyses showing that the similar results of the primary endpoint were consistent among all subgroups. Um, so uh, syntax, syntax tertiles, diabetes status, ACS, and so forth. Okay, great results. Great, very, very interesting. I, I have to say, you know, that uh, coming from the ischemia trial the, uh, discussions, at least knowing the both type of revascularization, they really decrease in Jena. I think this is something pleasant to, to hear in this meeting. I, I have to say that I want to congratulate all the trials investigator, yourself, Dr. William Farron uh, from the Frame Trial Investigator, because this is, a, it, it's a, independently of the result, it's a landmark trial, and you conducted it in difficult times also. So you, all the team should be congratulated. I want to ask you something that I read in the abstract, um, and I don't fully understand is which, how, how, how do you describe this difference in the trajectory from, you know, between PCI and CABAS in terms of the quality of life? Right, so the, the, 
the, uh, the in 12 months, the primary endpoint was 12 months, but the, the trajectory also included differences from baseline to one month and then from one month to uh, 12 months. So it, um, it took the full uh, trajectory uh, throughout the first year. Okay, so there is a trend in time in between this point. Okay, and then I always, more than given that the audience from PCR online and their intervention, you know, a noise of methodology, uh, I would like to ask you which you believe are the, the main limitations and the main strengths from this, from this assessment you have pre presented today. Right, yeah, so start with the limitations. Uh, I think one year follow up is relatively short. Um, although I have to say that in um, the previous studies like Syntax or Freedom, the main findings at one year related to uh, uh, quality of life didn't change much beyond one year. Um, nevertheless, we will also uh, assess quality of life at three years and uh, five years. So um, that will be definitely be interesting. Another one is that, you know, we, we had uh, at 12, 12 months, we had like 89% of the patients completed the um, uh, quality of life. And we perform sensitivity analysis by performing multiple imputation, um, but that didn't uh, didn't change the main results. Um, I think a third thing is that we we didn't use other measures of uh, disease specific quality of life, such as the Seattle Angia questionnaire. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. In, in terms of uh, in the strengths, of course, it's um, yeah, it's a large randomized trial. Um, I think it's good that we took several points also after one month and one year. Um, working status is something that hasn't been done in, in all previous trials. And I think it's very useful also from a patient's perspective to know it um, and having engine as well. Okay, great, great. I, I, I will also add that one of the strengths is that you were the first group doing this type of trial. So you have all the, you know, all the, the success and all the, the congratulations for uh, putting this data to the community. I, I, wanna, I, I wanna ask you, probably this is the hot question that several people have made to you, but we all know that uh, FAME3 trial, in the main analysis wasn't, we would say no, a, a negative trial in terms of its hypothesis. Uh, and uh, this quality of life uh, as uh, analysis is not, I will not say it's completely favor on PCI, but they are like mixed results with no difference in the main primary endpoint, but some difference in secondary endpoint. So in your experience, how, how can we put all this together? So the main findings from frame trial, from frame three trial with the findings of quality of life, how, how, how this will impact clinical practice? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, um, you know, the, um, although PCI did not mean non-inferiority at one year, it was regarding the composite endpoint. If you look at the individual uh, components, you, can, you saw that the composite, the difference in the, uh, in the primary endpoint was driven by repeat revascularization. The, the, the individual endpoints weren't different. Uh, also, you know, like hard endpoints, data my stroke weren't different. So given the, the low differences in, in the hard endpoints, um, I think it comes all down on, um, on, on, on shared decision-making with a patient. And we now have the data on the quality of life that's, that's similar one year, um, and also angina similar one year. I think some, some patients uh, prefer, you know, having a higher chance of a, on a repeat revascularization. Um, they, they will accept, accept that just to, uh, just to um, uh, not have the higher risk of the burden of the, of the sternotomy and all the, the quality of life issues in the first months after a, a cabbage. So it's really a trade-off. And some patients might prefer uh, that trade-off and otherwise and, uh, some other patients, you know, would, would prefer uh, not having any chance of a repeat revascularization or as low as possible. Um, of course, that's one, one, uh, one, one piece of the puzzle that we still need is the longer, longer term follow up, especially related to, to clinical events. And um, yeah, we will, we will present the, uh, 
three-year follow-up uh, spring uh, uh, next year. Okay, okay. I, I, I completely agree. I think we add more uh, information for patients to decide which type of revascularization strategy they want. And you already uh, give me some glimpse of what the investigators are planning. So I always end this type of interviews for the for PCR online and intervention for trying to give them something, you know, compelling for the future. So which are the plans for the for the Fame Three trial? What are Fame Three investigators working on? If you can share something of that, if you cannot, we are, we can understand it. Sure. So um, I think the uh, we will follow patients up to five years with a, um, also a pre-specified key secondary endpoint at three years. So, um, uh, and that's a, that's a, a composite of, of, of data, my and stroke that will be presented next spring. So I, I hope that will be exciting data. Um, we're still working on the physiology sub-study. Now looking at what kind of patients, what, uh, if, if FMR was measured in three vessel disease, how many patients had functionally uh, two vessel disease or single vessel disease and how was it related to outcome? My expectation is that, that there are some patients in the you know, intermediate syntax fertile, which have a functionally synthetic syntax score, which is low. Um, and those patients might you know, have, a, uh, have, a, have a similar outcome as the cabbage patients. Of course, that's uh, my, my guess, but it's, uh, we will find out. And, we hope to um, to present those data also maybe later this year, probably at TCT. Okay, so many thanks for sharing this uh, roadmap that you have for, for this landmark trial. Congratulations again. I wanna share with the audience from PCR Online and Aero Intervention that this uh, uh, manuscript was simultaneously publicated in circulation. There's another congratulation for both co-first authors and all the team. Um, for, for PCR Online and Aero Intervention, uh, Dr. Zimmerman, it was a pleasure having you. Congratulations. Uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy an, a, a wonderful meeting in ACC 22 in DC. And with this, we end the coverage for this trial, but please keep uh, stung, uh, tune it with us because there will be another interviews. They will do a lot of um, notes and analysis of the late breaking clinical trials for ACC online uh, in PCR online. So many thanks, Dr. Zimmerman. Um, my pleasure to host you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It was really great. Thank you.